I just finished watching my first ever Monaco Grand Prix, and here is what I thought. Going into the weekend, as a new F1 fan, you hear two things about Monaco. You hear that it's going to be a very boring race, the most boring race of the year, but you also hear that it is the most prestigious race of the year. So those are the two things I had in mind going into this race. I knew that it was very important, very special, historic, of great importance, but just because something is important doesn't necessarily mean it's exciting. So I was still intrigued by this. Knowing it was an important race, but boring, I was still ready to watch because it's, it's history, it's part of history. The weekend and the start of the weekend did not disappoint. Qualifying was a blast to watch. It was exciting. There was a lot of drama there. Seeing Ferrari get first place, seeing Leclerc get first place, and then crashing to lock in pole position with Lewis Hamilton in seventh. That was a lot of fun and very entertaining to watch. So first of all, right there, the expectations of the race weekend being boring. Not right there. That was very exciting. Although I do know people are saying qualifying is the best part of Monaco and certainly it showed a lot of excitement right there at the beginning. And then race day came with even more drama as Leclerc cannot get his car working in good enough condition to race. And wow, you do have to feel bad for him. And you have to feel bad for Ferrari. They haven't won in what? Since 2018, I believe, or something like that. I might be wrong, but knowing they're one of the most historic teams, seeing them have a chance to finally win again i was i was pulling for them i wanted to see ferrari back on top after so long being away i wanted to see the team that was one of the great teams of f1 i want to see him back on top it would have been a lot of fun but unfortunately leclerc damaged his car too much on the crash i guess or something was wrong with his gearbox and i did really feel bad for them but it was very dramatic seeing that but such a bummer with ferrari not being able to get their first win out there and then the race started and that's when i started to see why people were saying monaco was boring that whole first half of the race not much happening at all not even a lot happened on the first lap where usually you might see some action or crashing or something like that not much happening at all and i could see why why people wouldn't be entertained it is a really slow pace can't really pass and people are saving their tires but then when the pit stops started happening boy was that a lot of fun seeing mercedes completely screw up hamilton's pit stop that the strategy was clearly to overcut because you would have so much more clean track with everyone pitting ahead of you you had a lot more open track to run as fast as you can without being slowed down clearly the overcut was the way to go and mercedes blew it shockingly i didn't give my impressions on portimao or didn't give my impressions on the race before this one it was uh it was catalonia but seeing in those two races pit strategy be a factor and Mercedes being so on point it was shocking how they completely miscalculated when they were able to do stuff like do a trick two stopper in just a couple races before you'd think they have their mathematics their calculations all down and to see them completely blow it that was shocking I I, I, I don't know what happened that was so surprising and obviously hearing Lewis Hamilton so distraught and frustrated on the radio since I started watching F1, I have not heard that before. That was something new. Meanwhile, Aston Martin pulling off the perfect strategy, jumping up what? Getting Vettel up four places. That was awesome. And it's awesome seeing Vettel go and become, get a top five in this race. There's so much hype at the beginning of the season for Aston Martin. The team coming back in, rebranding a pre prestigious brand with 
one of the best drivers of all time, multi-time champion, Sebastian Vettel. And they started off slow in the season, but seeing them succeed today, that's really intriguing. A really fun storyline. Didn't really show it a lot on TV, but it was it was still feeling good seeing him go all the way up there. But Red Bull really doing a great strategy for Perez. Just waiting it out till the track cleared up for him, able to go get a really fast lap coming in, jumping all the way to fourth place. Red Bull nailed it. It wasn't just that they had a good car and those fancy wings that people are talking about, but they did a really smart strategy there. And what I'm learning about myself as I see what I really like about F1 and love about it, I'm really learning that pit strategy and race strategy is what I am really starting to enjoy or what I've been enjoying. I love thinking about what a team could do next to win. And playing the video games now, playing F1 2020, I like to apply that. Playing iRacing, I like to think, okay, should I short pit here? Will there be a safety car? Will there be a caution flag? Something gonna happen. And especially playing Motorsport Manager, the PC version, every time, right after an F1 race, the game I wanna play the most is Motorsport Manager because pit strategy is so fun to me it's so intriguing just trying to outsmart the other teams i love that part about f1 i think it is so fun and cool if you haven't played motorsport manager and you're f1 fan you got to do it it is such a good game and so while the rest of the race after the pit strategy there wasn't any more drama after that because i am such a big fan a pit strategy for me it made the race pretty entertaining seeing how teams can calculate, seeing if teams can trick each other, thinking about the radio communications. They're talking about drivers speaking in code or when drivers say their tires are terrible, they're actually good, trying to just get the edge over the other team. For me, that's a huge part in what makes a race entertaining. So even though for a lot of people, this might have been one of the most boring F1 races they've ever seen, I loved seeing the pitch strategy and being entertained by that and on top of that the overall context of the race and the cause and effect of what happened during the race was huge the fact that now mercedes has lost the lead in the championship the fact that lewis hamilton has lost the lead in the championship for the first time since 2018 incredible very exciting that's the stuff that made this race really exciting and now i am super excited for the rest of the season to to just play out mercedes cannot make mistakes they have to be on their a game and red bull is showing while mercedes can smoke them sometimes their consistency has been the key to winning here their consistency they might not get as much wins but now i'm learning here in f1 consistency could be the key to getting you the championship you don't need the most wins but max constantly finishing second perez doing really good that is what led gives them the lead now consistency is key not just getting huge wins and lastly i am excited to see for the rest of this season the drama with Bottas and Mercedes. Is this his last season? They screwed up his pit stop again. He wouldn't let Lewis Hamilton pass in Catalonia. It looked like it. And, you know, George Russell is coming up there. He was racing him in Imola. Imola, I should say. This could be the end of Valtteri's time at Mercedes, and it will be interesting to see how this silly season plays out who's gonna replace him if he's gonna be replaced if he finds that out early what does that mean will he not cooperate with the team will the team not really give him as much advantages as hamilton has will they slack off on working on his car on his pit stops we'll find out that is a really intriguing side story to me but of course the thing i'm most excited for the driver's championship the constructor's championship Mercedes has to bring their A game and if Lewis Hamilton is able to pull it off this year it will be well earned and man I will see him as one of the greatest as the greatest probably even though of course I'm a new F1 fan didn't get to see Michael Schumacher live although I have been watching 
the season reviews, I'm watching the 1997 review right now, and that has been a fun one to watch. Not quite done yet, but a great battle between Schumacher and Villeneuve. Very fun, and fun to see Williams doing great back in those years. But back on topic, Monaco, the racing on track itself, nothing too exciting, but the context around it, the pitch strategy, made this still a great race. As a new F1 fan, I'm still intrigued by this season. I am still all in on F1. And yeah, I'm just excited to continue sharing my enjoyment with you guys. So let me know what you thought about the race. Hope you continue to enjoy the racing and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching.